In today's LEGO City update, things are going to get a bit illegal, not just in terms of building techniques, but also when it comes to the storyline. We're finally going to continue the Mafia story right here in the interior of the old factory, but obviously before we are able to do any storytelling we first of all have to design the building itself. It took me about three days of constant building to finalize it and honestly I believe it was time that was well spent, especially when it comes to the exterior facade. My goal was to make it look a bit run down and weathered, hence the exposed bricks and the color choices for the exterior. Regarding the ivy, this time I used olive green leaves as a base and then added these three parted leaf elements on top and honestly I find the combination works better than previous ivy variants I have used because it simply covers up all the brick modifieds I've used down below. Moving on to the roof, I'm quite satisfied with how it turned out although it took me quite some time to figure out how exactly this roof now fits onto the prepared angle and regarding the second roof which was even more complicated because in this case I had to use 16 hinges to achieve the desired angle that eventually also fit snugly into place and covers up the main factory hall. Next up I decided to add sliding doors because that building is so far in front in my layout I thought it might be a great opportunity to allow visitors to really look into the building itself and eventually see the story that's going on inside. There you can see the, to be honest, very basic sliding mechanism. I simply use tiles on the floor and then two pillars on the side to hold everything in place. But it works and that's all that matters. Having quickly finished the floor, it's time for the main storytelling. And now what's coming next? I'll let you guess what this exactly is going to be. Let's call it flower beds for now. The brown in the middle simply is the soil. And now, although the amount of leaves isn't quite accurate to what I'm building, now you can see in total, I think if you know what it's supposed to be, it looks quite accurate now. And now I've of course added as many of those little farm things inside the factory as possible because the mafia wants to extract maximum value out of their small illegal plantation inside here. Then of course fans in order to circulate air in the room and for the lighting this is now probably the most important part I'll need to figure out the exact color for now I've chosen yellow lights but violet or something along these lines is a bit more accurate probably having finished the main hall of the factory it's time to continue outside and this is now quite difficult because I somehow have to create the transition from this normal intact tiling onto this rundown weathered look of the factory and therefore I've added these small gaps in between the tiling which makes it look a bit cracked and this is exactly what I was aiming for. Of course out of these cracks a few plants are growing which is quite realistic. Behind the factory I now chose to add a dark green tree. I've never used that before but I absolutely love this color combination of the olive green ivy and the dark green tree. Two workers on the outside. Of course, I quickly have to finish up that small, not really flower bed, but simply the wilderness on the back side of the factory, which separates the two areas a little bit. And now, since I was talking about the tiling, this is even more detailed now. I was using gold ingots in light and dark bluish gray in order to have the tiling pop out a little bit more. And then, of course, added details on top of that. A few barrels on the outside of the factory. I think they always look fantastic, especially in these types of spots. And then a small pallet I've built for the outside. I honestly love designing these little small things that only consist out of a few pieces but are quite accurate at least for the size they are built in. Now before we come back to the old factory and continue the storytelling, I definitely need to do some improvements right here where the cliffs go down into the sea. As I've also mentioned last video, I'm not really satisfied with the really rough transition at the moment and therefore I've decided to add once again a little bit more vegetation and now a cliff diver. Since you guys all wanted me to add one right there in front, I thought this might be an awesome way to use once again these little angled transparent pieces because that now really looks like the diver is jumping off the cliff right now and this other minifigure right there is taking pictures. What I also added is one guy that just landed in the water and therefore you can see all the little air bubbles in the water right around the guy which completes another small story. What you guys also wanted me to add was a small ladder to make it easier to get out of the water. I simply opted for this little ladder piece that was pre-made by Lego. Doesn't always have to be the most complicated solution to work. And now this is quite an important question for you guys. Do you want me to add these little extra rocks right along the cliff because some of you wanted me to add that but I'm not too sure if I should integrate them. Definitely let me know that in the comments. And now it's time to get to work 
on the backside of the factory. First of all, nobody, including me, was really satisfied with how the separation of the little sitting area of the pizzeria turned out and therefore I've removed that and exchanged it with fences, which looks much, much cleaner if you ask me. And then another really annoying construction site that was still empty were, of course, these gaps behind this row of houses. And first of all, let's start with the most complicated one, the angle right there in the corner. I've now decided to use stacked plates and of course in order to add them I have to elevate the entire thing. In that case I was simply using these bigger pillars in order to lift everything up since of course all the houses in front totally cover up that space. It works fine although at the moment it doesn't look good but just wait a few seconds and then I think you're going to like it. A bit of vegetation on top then it's time to quickly add the buildings once again and now I'm at this point still thinking about maybe adding a tree right on top of that tree trunk I've added. You'll see that in just a second first of all I simply have to finish the entire area right there you can see I was using these fence pieces which are always four studs long which is really annoying because I always have to improvise in order to make it work at the angles there you can see how I've solved that problem honestly love how clean that now looks and now for the most important question do you want me to add this tree or not from certain perspectives what I don't like is that it somehow looks like the tree is growing on top of the house but if we go a little bit around the corner from that perspective right now, this honestly I like much much more because it lacks vegetation at the moment. But you decide if I should keep the tree or not. Then of course over the next few updates I'm going to continue covering up this annoying gap behind the row of houses in the transition onto the upper platform. And of course after the annoying work it's time to get back to the storytelling and back to the old factory. I know it's a bit unrealistic that we have these giant large windows on the outside and the illegal plantation going on on the inside but otherwise you wouldn't really be able to see the full story from the exterior. What I definitely want to add right in front of the door is maybe a sort of special operations team ready to storm the facility and then bust the entire operation because right now as you know I still haven't added anything into this smaller room right in front and this might be a great opportunity to add police officers that are just about to storm the factory which would honestly make sense because the rest of all the mafia operations in the city for example the weapons trade right there aren't noticed at all by police at the moment and therefore well I thought this might be a great opportunity. I'll try to maybe motorize this small door in front of course a bit more smoothly than I've done it right now but of course with one hand this is quite difficult to show but ideally I want to open it simultaneously to then allow visitors to have a view into the factory and the plantation itself every few minutes or so. What I really like about the build is how I managed the transition in the tiling from the intact tiling right behind it onto the more run down cracked up tiling just beside the factory. And of course I still need to show you one final thing for this episode which is of course two days before and after picture. This is what the empty space looked like before today's update and now surprise afterwards we of course have added the factory. It's always great to see the entire progress in one single frame that changes towards the end of the video so I'll definitely keep it because you guys always want me to add the before and after picture and with that being said that's it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you again in the next one.